we're sitting in the hotel room with Richard Ward, uh, the CEO of Lloyd's of London. And unfortunately, Richard's going to be leaving Lloyd's fairly soon. And uh, I'd like to ask him some of the more important uh, things that he's seen in his tenure. Richard, you started in 2006 mm -hmm. as Lloyd's CEO, didn't you? Uh, but that was right after Hurricane Katrina. Katrina. Yeah. And uh, Sandy also happened on your watch. Uh, what were some of the more interesting mm -hmm. experiences you had? A lot had? of things in between Katrina, Rita Wilma, and Sandy. And let's not forget the financial crisis of 2008. Let's the not. collapse of Lehman's, the bailout of AIG. Then we had Ike and Gustav in 2008 as well. Um, 2011, costliest year on record for the Lloyds market. Australian floods. Uh, Christchurch earthquake, Tohoku earthquake in Japan, devastating oh, yeah. tragic earthquake and also the Thai floods. So a lot of things have happened during my time, my nearly eight years in Lloyd's. I think a, f a few things I would draw on. Firstly, the strength we're in today, the position we're in today is far better than the one we were in in 2006. Fin financially we're stronger from market and market oversight perspective, in terms of underwriting discipline, capital management were better, in terms of our reputation and brand it is stronger, in terms of our license network and our reach it's stronger. So I'm very pleased with all the things that we've achieved in that uh, nearly eight year period. But the one thing that I'd really sort of focus on is the approach we take to market oversight in terms of underwriting and capital that has delivered the strong profits that the market has shown throughout quite a difficult period, That's financial close. crisis, major cats. Uh, when, when was the Franchise Board established? Franchise Board was established in 2003, right. and Rolf Toller was the first Franchise right. Board, Franchise Performance Director. Uh, and then I came in in 06, and Rolf was with me for a, probably a couple of years, two to three years, and Tom Bolt has now been with us for about four years or five years. And I think, again, what has happened in that time is when I arrived, I think there was still some uncertainty and mm -hmm. concern amongst the market as to what our role should actually be and how would we work with the market. I mean, I think through Rolf and Tom, we've established a great relationship with the market. It's seen as a commercial business relationship with the market, where there is that confidence in our ability to oversee the market approve business plans and set capital to the extent we now have more people wanting to join than ever before oh, and you know okay. we've seen a significant influx of new syndicates not necessarily everyone's happy with those new syndicates but I think from a market regeneration perspective it's very important we've had new syndicates join the market so we've got new syndicates capital providers coming in the market we've had Lloyd's businesses acquired mm -hmm. so all those things indicate to me that the insurance market that we operate is seen as a good place to do business. Yeah, how many syndicates are there now actually? Oh, well over 80. Well, yeah, over I think 80. The number's about 87, I mean it changes, okay. so it, it, probably up at about 87 and roughly about 54 managing agents. Okay. Are you going to ask me how many were there in 2006, no, Charlie? Not. Good, because I can't remember <laughs> that. <laughs> no, but, but it's... Uh, we've had quite a few more joins since 06. Yeah, and I think then they're generally they're very well capitalized. Uh, I believe yeah. that uh, the franchise board system, uh, it's now called the performance... Well, system. it's still the franchise board, but, but Tom's title is performance management performance director, manager, director. Because you've got to recognize there's so many components that contribute to the overall franchise. And it's not just underwriting. Mm -hmm. It's capital. It's risk management. It's licensed networks. It's market infrastructure. So that's why I was keen to change Tom's title to reflect what he was actually doing, which was managing the performance of the market from mm -hmm. an underwriting perspective but recognizing the many factors that contribute to the value of the franchise. That's, that's, that's interesting. And you, you did mention, well, I, I've heard the figure, and I think I spoke with you about it, that uh, the loss in uh, 2011 for Lloyds was something like $20 billion. $20 billion U.S. dollars, yeah. The yeah. costliest year on record. Yeah, of which Lloyds did overall have a loss, but it was not a huge loss. It wasn't a huge loss, and in terms of... Uh, loss reported for the market at the end of the year, it was roughly half a billion pounds loss we reported, so what's that, three quarters of a billion US dollars. Um, that might sound a lot of money to people, but recognise we paid out 20 billion dollars exactly. in claims. But more importantly, during 2011, we built our financial strength. Now, if this loss had happened 
or this claim had happened, let's say, 15 years ago, I think people would have been questioning Lloyd's ability to trade forward and to continue to do business. Not one single commentator questioned our financial strength, questioned our ability to pay our claims. To the contrary, we continue to improve our financial position. So today we're rated A-plus by S&P and Fish, and we're on a positive outlook. So that's a pretty good position to be in. It certainly is. It doesn't get too much better. Uh, just uh, out, of, out of curiosity, the big sort of, what would you call it, uh, concern that people are expressing mm -hmm. at this year's rendezvous is over uh, alternative capital coming into the market from insurance-linked securities and cat bonds and collateralized in, in mm -hmm. reinsurance. And, uh, well, I'm sure that Lloyd's has, has addressed this. Can you, can you tell us a bit what your, the position is? Well, that? I mean, we're all concerned about additional capital coming into the market unless it's matched by additional demand. Mm -hmm. It's a simple supply-demand equation. So we, if we see an increase in supply, capital, whether you call it alternative capital or traditional capital, the reality is it's capital. And if there isn't the demand to match that capital, i.e. demand for our insurance products, then it puts downward pressure on rates. Okay. And so that's an underlying concern here in Monte Carlo, that with that capital coming in and not seeing an uptick in demand globally, it could have a depressing effect on rates. So the challenge for us in the Lloyd's marketplace is to see how we can create demand for our products. But it's creating a demand where people actually need our products. You know, you've seen in the banking sector, I'm afraid, in the past, the bankers have created products that no one needs and they've managed, the bankers have managed to sell it to clients and it's serving no value for the client. Exactly. What we've got to do is focus on our value-add service where we do provide a real service to clients to help them manage their risks and we need to go out and help people understand how they can use insurance and reinsurance to manage that risk. Okay, well I'm, there are a lot of ways that that can be done. One of them is of course uh, finding new areas of risk, cyber liability for yeah. instance, uh, uh, more on the environment, uh, things like that. Is Lloyd's working on any of those? Absolutely. And you say finding new areas of risk. What these are, these are risks that our clients face today mm -hmm. that they're asking us to help them manage. And that's the important thing. We've got to listen to the risks that our clients face and help them understand how they might use insurance to manage those risks. Mm -hmm. Cyber is not a new risk. We've no. been doing cyber for 20 years in the Lloyd's marketplace, but it's coming up everyone's agenda yeah, because of the focus on it. So yes, we need to help businesses understand how they might manage that cyber risk using the sort of products that we can offer. But I think more importantly, how can we redefine our offering to help them manage that mm -hmm. risk? We come out with a risk index every two years, and th that is a survey of CEOs around the globe, roughly 500 CEOs across the globe, and ask them, you know, which risks do they rank in terms of priority? Well, cyber has shot up from something like 22 years ago to number three today. But there are other risks on that list that you can't necessarily manage easily using insurance products, reputational risk. So that risk index to me throws the gauntlet down to our industry saying, these are the risks our clients are worried about. How can we develop products to help them manage that risk? I see. And emerging markets where I, I know Lloyd's is uh, very well situated in China. And you have uh, an international office in Singapore. But there, there seems to be some financial difficulties with uh, some of the uh, uh, emerging countries. Do you see that as sort of slowing down growth in that area, or do you think it'll be overcome? Yeah, I'm not too sure what you mean by financial difficulties. Well, you, you've got uh, Brazil, uh, India, China. The the out the lots of the capital that has flowed into those countries now seems to be flowing out. Uh, that kind of thing. Right, is but that I mean, a real in terms concern, of or in not? terms of growth opportunities. These are fast-growing markets, China, India, Brazil, Turkey. They have risks that they need to manage, particularly countries such as China and Turkey that face significant natural catastrophe exposure. Sure. I mean, look at the Sichuan earthquake of 2008. Uh, the economic loss from that earthquake was, I th I th if I remember the number rightly, it was about 100 billion. It was a phenomenal, phenomenal loss. In terms of how much of that was insured, it was a few percent. So there's a phenomenal opportunity there for the insurance industry to help Chinese people, Chinese businesses manage that, that risk. 
the economy is still growing. The economy is probably growing about seven to seven and a half percent. So I don't know growth. if you consider that financially, you know, financial difficulties. No. I, here in Europe, certainly in the UK, we'd love to have growth of two percent. Yeah. We're, you know, we're a percent or less at the moment. So these are still fast growing economies that have risks that they need to manage that we are able to help them manage. I'm just wondering, uh, could you just give us a very briefly synopsis of what, what, is, Lloyd's, what is Lloyd's doing in China? Well, we, we have an operation in China. We established it back in 2007, a reinsurance operation in Shanghai. Since 2007, we've uh, been awarded a direct license to operate out of Shanghai, and we're now looking to expand our presence by opening up a branch for reinsurance in Beijing. What, what we're doing is in, Chan, sorry, in China is establishing a presence. It's a long-term game, a long-term play. You cannot expect to make money overnight in China. It's important that we build up our reputation, our brand, that the local market understands what we can do to help them, and over time we'll see more business flow through into the Lloyds platform. So we are investing for the long term in that marketplace, recognizing by 2025, 2030, China will be the largest economy in the world. So we need a presence there. And you're generally following that strategy, I assume, in, in other emerging markets. Well, of course. We've opened up an office in Brazil. We're an emitted reinsurer in Brazil. So as that market went through the liberalization process, we established a presence. And now we're the second largest reinsurer in Brazil after IRB. Oh, really? we're, we're looking at seeing how we can establish a presence in Turkey with that market growing as well. We have very large uh, presence in Mexico in terms of business that we write from Mexico. The one country that we struggle with is India. Yeah. But we need a change in legislation in India to enable us to operate onshore. And there are signs that, that those bills might go through Parliament at some point. They haven't done it yet. Yeah, there always seems to be bills in the Indian Parliament. Bills always seem to be in progress, but some bills have recently passed through okay, Parliament. I think one particularly around pensions. So we're a little bit more hopeful than we were probably two years ago that there might be an opportunity to have those bills presented that would enable us to operate onshore. Okay. One last question. You've been coming to the rendezvous now for eight years. Eight years. Uh, how do you find it? Do you think it's helpful? Do you, you know, why, uh, why is it a good thing to do, or is it? It is a good thing to do because it's the one event in the year that everyone comes to. So the opportunity to meet CEOs from reinsurers, insurers, and brokers in one place is just fantastic. So the networking, the business meetings that you can have here are far more productive than anywhere else I've known. If I wanted to meet all the CEOs of the major European reinsurers, the US reinsurers, the brokers, you can do it here and you can do it in a day. That's Outside a Monte Carlo, <laughs> I'd have to spend a lot of time in a plane to achieve that, so that's, it's worth coming to. That's a little dangerous. If somebody managed to destroy it when it was here, there wouldn't be an insurance industry anymore. <laughs> I hope someone's managing that risk, Charlie. <laughs> I hope so too. Thank you, Richard, very Pleasure. much.